Okay, now we're getting into the secondary pigment cells. So picture here, all right? These have several different things about them. Okay, so first I'm gonna go over the number. There should be six to 18, depending on order, genus, insect groupings, okay? Um, in general, at least each omotidium shares six with the neighbor omotidia. So this is the chain linking in the actual compound eye, it's these secondary pigment cells. They are always shared with a neighbor. And because they are hexagonal, it's basically like one half of the hexagon gets shared and then the other half of the hexagon gets shared. And then again, because they're all tightly packed together. So in general, again, six to 18. Butterflies tend to have a lot more of these. Um, but then you have something like um, like a springtail that has very minimal. Um, they all function the same though. These are the mobile pigment cells, okay? What happens is in that picture, if you see, they were long. They go all the way from the top of the crystalline cone and the, pig the primary pigment cells all the way to the basement membrane, okay? They follow right along what we would consider the the optic nerve of the rhydom and the photon receptors. Okay, they they just go right down through it. Um, and the pigment, very much like I, our eye in these secondary cells, is like our iris, where it can our iris dilates, expands, and contracts. The pigment, instead of expanding and contraction, moves up and down. Okay, so when they do not need a lot of light the superposition eye, the pigment is evenly distributed, okay? Um, when the superposition eye, which again is nocturnal insects only, I might have said that, but then kind of just assumed it. Um, when the superposition eye needs more light, the pigment shifts up and basically forms a cocoon around the primary pigment cells in the crystalline cones, okay? And what this does is leaves this giant gap between the crystalline cone, the pigment cells, and the ribon, rid, ridon, and the photoreceptors. Now, why? Okay, so oh, actually, I totally forgot to talk about the structure. What makes these pigment cells so interesting is that their membranes are incredibly stiff and rigid. And if you look at the picture, they're kind of packed together like a puzzle to be, puzzle sometimes on this wire. Um, and because they're so stiff and rigid, the pigment can shift up and it leaves this translucent membrane around the main nerve. Um, so this shifting up is what we call the clear zone in superposition eyes. Now there is not an official name for this, which is incredibly irritating. Everybody calls it the clear zone. Even the oldest academic literature just says this clear zone. It's not an actual clear zone. What it is is the pigments shift up and then when they're examining the eye, the pigment's up at the top, so it looks clear. What it is is the it, there's still the cells there, still the rods, still the, the membranes. This happens very much like a magnifying glass. What it does is the pigment shifts up at night when the insect needs to see and process as much light as possible. And not only does it process the light from that one omotidia, because the pigment shifts up, all the light is shared. So multiple omotidia are feeding light into the photoreceptors and the right on. So it is basically the in insect insect equivalent of putting on glasses okay they can see okay like reading glasses they can see okay as soon as you put it on it expands all right and again it's just like our eyes where it's dilating to expand to let light in in this case they're expand it's shifting up to let light 
hit multiple receptors and process the image. So in an A position eye, each omentidia processes its own light and pumps it into the nerve. In a superposition eye, because of these mobile pigment shifts, every omotinia can translate multiple to different photoreceptors. And it basically is why like flies and moths have such good vision. Um, also in nocturnal insects like butterflies, that or nocturnal insects that became diurnal, they still have this type of eye. Um, what it does is the pigment doesn't shift as much. Okay, it stays more evenly evenly distributed um there's also some internal structures on each one of these they're micro they call them microvilli but technically they're micro palpi palpia pa, micro palpilia eh, not microvilli there are differences um and so those are kind of like the little hooks that trigger the different photoreceptors um but, again, that's eye-specific, that's structure-specific. So if you really walk out of this, just understand that these secondary pigment cells are long. They, the pigment can shift up. Um, all the organelles and everything, too, are all shifted to the top of the cells. Okay? Everything. It's like the entire cell just says, gravity does not matter. <laughs> um, and, yeah, this is what actually makes omotidia work is because especially if they want to like pick up more like ultraviolet light they'll shift the pigment on that receptor so it, it's their lensing it's their focusing so really cool and now you understand pigment cells and the clear zone and the superposition eye and see why it had to all be together also, I want to add, this was the part that was most difficult to understand about omotidia. Because until you actually see this shifting in lab and under a microscope, it is freaking hard to comprehend. Like, it does not get communicated or translated or written right. But it, it definitely was the mind-blowing moment where I said, this is where we're studying.